Hi, I'm Mike de Griesley. Now, I'm not an historian or an archaeologist, but I do tend to carry out a lot of historical research as a graphic artist, 3D CGI developer and documentary video maker. During the course of 2014, I'm gathering material for a project I'm working on to produce an independent video production entitled The Salt Revolution. Now, in this short video, I'm exploring the history of the old Bradford Canal. So why not join me? As a lad growing up in Bradford, I'd heard handed down stories about the stinking open sewer that had once been the Bradford Canal. Its unhealthy state and condition played a part in Titus Salt's decision to move his five mills, lock, stock and barrel to the new mill and workers village he intended building just northwest of Shipley in the Air Valley. First opened in 1774, it ran as a branch off the main Leeds and Liverpool Canal for three and a half miles to the Hoppy Bridge Wharf. Ninety-six years later, it was declared a major public health hazard and was closed in 1866. I'm starting this walk from the old Junction Bridge and Toll House, which, given its local and national historical importance, is of no surprise to me to see it in such a state of dereliction. This is where the Bradford Canal first met with the Leeds and Liverpool Canal and bargees had to navigate their first set of locks. Today, all that remains of Window Lock is a lockkeeper's cottage and the pump house, which was built in 1872. Now, considering the canal was closed in 1866, I'm going to have to return to this a little bit later. After passing beneath Window Bridge on Leeds Road, it then steered a course towards Brigate Bridge before encountering the locks at Pricking Mill Staircase. It then passed beneath Poplar Road Bridge, up Crag End Locks and onto the bridge at Gazeby Lane. From Gazeby Lane Bridge, it's just over a hundred metres to the next bridge at Stanley Road. Unlike today, canals had been the arteries of trade and commerce, transporting goods and commodities to and from other cities and major ports and docks. Canals back then were about business, the bottom line and cold hard profits. For many, canals were not just a source for making a living, they were also a way of life. Theirs was a harsh life by today's standards, but possibly far better than the lives of many who had to work in the mills and live in the damp, stinking, rat-infested slums, cellars and basements within the city of Bradford. A city whose reputation for being a stinking hellhole was known throughout the four corners of the earth. But on the other hand, Bradford was a victim of its own unregulated success. In 1801, Bradford was a rural market town with a population of just over 6,000. But Bradford's businessmen took full advantage of the Industrial Revolution and the region's natural resources, 
and whilst it had become known as the dirtiest town in England, it had also earned the title of world capital of the world, and by 1850 its population had increased to a staggering 182,000 with the arrival of both German and Irish immigrants. With such a massive population increase over a short period of time, it was almost impossible to provide adequate housing, services or infrastructure to cope with this change. Even Titus Salt, who had served as Bradford's second Lord Mayor between 1848 to 49, was unable to effect positive and beneficial changes within the city. From Stanley Road Bridge, it was then onto the Oliver Staircase Locks, after which it then ran behind these rows of terraced houses fronting Canal Road. Now, when I was a young lad, I can remember when there were still streets lit by gas lamps, and these electric lamps were still relatively recent additions. However, I did smile when I came across this old girl hiding away in this old back alley. Well, may she remain here a little longer, if only for reasons of nostalgia. The canal then continues on, passing beneath Bolton Lane Bridge, then under the Queen's Road arches. Now here's a photograph from the 1920s or 30s, showing us what the area looked like back then. The canal then passed the gasworks and under the bridge at King's Road, or Tordoff Road as it was then known. Now here is an artist drawing of Bradford which appeared serialised in the local newspaper in the latter part of the 19th century. Each week the paper printed a different section and you pasted the sections together. Great idea. I've spent some time studying this drawing and I can tell you its accuracy is quite impressive and this in the days before aircraft or maybe a hot air balloon was used. Anyhow, this is the area we're interested in just down here. Even after 150 years, the old gas works still exist. By the way, the other storage tank is hidden behind the one in front here in this photograph. And you can also see Kings Road or Tordoff Road Bridge, as it was then called, crossing the canal before it comes to Spinkwell Locks. Today, that area looks like this, and I've taken this photograph from about this spot on the old drawing. I'm picking up the course of the canal at this point here, which is now a peaceful woodland trail with a hidden historical surprise, but I shall be returning to this old drawing a little later. As you walk through this landscape, it's hard to imagine this whole area was once a hive of industrial activity. Today, water leaches through the pores of former mills and workshops once built upon the terraced cliff face. However, there does exist a natural spring known as Spink Well, and it was here when Bradford was but a small market town that a great man-killing boar would drink of the well's waters. A cunning local huntsman slew the beast and now its head forever adorns the crest of Bradford. The trail brings you out by the side of the old chapel whose services have now been reduced to those of a speedy tyre change. Now this part of the canal's course really is difficult to imagine because the whole landscape was reshaped when this road was built. A 
And here is where the Bradford Canal terminated, Hoppy Bridge Wharf. Opened with great pride and a sense of real achievement in 1774 and closed as an open stinking sewer in 1866. So what had been the cause of so much pollution? Well, canals need a source of water to maintain their level because every time a lock is used, water is also transferred down to the next section of the canal. This 1802 map of Bradford shows the canal being fed by a stream coming into the town from the southeast. But as traffic using the canal increased, it became apparent this source of water wasn't sufficient to maintain the canal's level. However, there was another more abundant source of water, the Bradford Beck, highly contaminated with a toxic cocktail of both industrial and human waste. But this was a source of water which had specifically been identified as one never to be used for maintaining the level of the canal. In 1844, the Bradford Board of Surveyors produced a report in which they commented on the filth and stench of the Bradford Canal. Then in 1849, an outbreak of cholera claimed the lives of 406 people. The next 18 years were beset with legal wrangling to close the canal once and for all. Even the local newspaper, the Bradford Observer, described the canal as that seething cauldron of all impurity. By 1851, Titus Salt had sold his five mills in Bradford and begun to build his new mill and model workers' village beyond its then boundaries. The sweltering hot summer of 1864 led to a fund being set up to pay for the legal cost for a court order to have the canal closed on the grounds that it was now a real public nuisance. Finally, the order was issued in 1866 and the canal was eventually closed on the 1st of May, 1867. The canal was quickly drained and infilled. Hoppy Bridge Wharf was leveled and the area redeveloped. And that should have been the end of the matter. With the canal's closure, local stone quarries now had no viable means of transporting their goods. Several of these influential stone merchants petitioned and negotiated with the Leeds and Liverpool, the Air and Calder Canal Companies, as well as with the Bradford Council, to reopen the canal from below Northbrook Bridge. These merchants formed a new company, the Bradford Canal Company Limited, and purchased what remained of the old canal for a mere £2,500. The new Zetland Mills Wharf was built just above Spinkwell Locks, which can just be seen here in this drawing. The company also had to build a series of pump houses along the canal to pump water back up the canal. And in 1873, the canal was reopened. It never regained its commercial viability. Whilst the stone merchants welcomed its return, the rest of local industry had found alternative transport during its closure and never did return. The Bradford Canal finally closed in 1922. The canal played a major part in bringing prosperity to Bradford but its mismanagement left a deep historical scar, both within the local and national psyche. It's been over 100 years since Hoppy Bridge Wharf was redeveloped, and those buildings are now old, tired, abandoned, and some derelict. But slowly, very slowly, they too are being replaced or converted into offices and new homes. <laughs>